Yo, 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 what is up, guys? It's Cohen back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer. If you've watched any of these videos, you know the drill by now. Three playoff games. I have a lot to say about each and every one of them. Particularly, I want to talk about the Suns and Lakers and Bucks and Heat games. Uh, I do have a lot also to say about the Nuggets Blazers game, but that will come last. Uh, the, primarily, I do want to talk about these Suns and Lakers games and about how good the Lakers looked in this game, as well as how good the Bucks have looked all series against the Heat, especially these last two games. But also a little bit about how bad the Heat have looked, like what's gone wrong for them. And then I want to finish talking a little bit about the Nuggets and Blazers and why the Blazers have been so disappointing this season and just how the Nuggets are abusing them in matchups. So I'm going to get into all that. Uh, first of all, drop a like on this video. Subscribe if you like NBA content. Uh, videos pretty much every single night. I've been trying to do every single night so far, and I haven't missed a single night in the playoffs. So I'm going to keep trying to make that go. So if you want to see these videos, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them. But like I said... We're going to start with Suns Lakers. Uh, this game was close for the first half, and then the Lakers took over. Um, the Lakers just look absolutely locked in. At halftime, this game, neither team had 50 points. It looked like a game from the early 2000s with how much defense was being played. Neither team could score. And then in the second half, the Lakers remembered how to score, and the game really got away from the Phoenix Suns. At one point, they kind of brought it back. It was kind of getting close towards the end of the game. Uh, Cameron Payne hit three threes in a row, and I think they brought it within like eight, nine points. But then the Lakers ended up making a couple more shots. The Suns fouled them a couple of times. They held Kuzma on a rebound, and ultimately, they could not catch up to the Lakers. Um, this game in particular, I think, really showed how much the Suns miss having Chris Paul out there at times. Uh, Chris Paul really didn't play at all in the fourth quarter, especially in those clutch time minutes. Given Even if he was in, I'm not sure how much of a difference it would have made in this game just because, and I know how good Chris Paul is. I'm a Thunder fan. I watched him do it all season, but the Lakers had the Suns absolutely locked down on, like, uh, Absolutely. There was nothing the Suns could do. Jay Crowder is shooting like, I think like two for 24 or something like that in this series from three, something really not good. Um, Devin Booker could not hit a shot to save his life tonight. Chris Paul, he was playing well in the uh, 20 plus minutes that he played, but ultimately did not come back in the game towards the end. Cameron Payne was playing great at the end even. Um, he had nine points in like a row to bring the game back for the Suns. He was their best player in those final minutes, and it just didn't matter. DeAndre Ayton was, and Cameron Payne were really the only players that kind of showed up today. 22-11 uh, and 11 for DeAndre Ayton to continue this great series he's having. Uh, this has really kind of been his coming out party. Like I said, he's been the best player. Probably, he's probably been the best player for the Suns throughout this entire series so far. Um, the problem is it's not enough with how good the Lakers have been, especially defensively. I think a lot of people forgot how good this Lakers team was and how good they were defensively before LeBron and AD went out. Uh, I've said this in previous videos, but before LeBron and AD went out, this Lakers team was by far not even close the best defensive team in the NBA. It wasn't even close. And I think the Suns inexperience is really starting to show a little bit, especially at the end of the game. Um, Devin Booker got really frustrated at the end and he shoved Dennis Schroeder, getting a flagrant two, which um, you could have argued whether it was a flagrant one or two, but I do think it was a flagrant foul. And ultimately, you just can't be doing stuff like that in a playoff game. You have to keep your emotions in check. Even though the game's getting out of hand, you can't risk doing something that might get you in trouble later down the line. You can't do that. And Devin Booker, I love him. He's one of my favorite players, but he's got to keep that in check. When you're when you are the two seed, when you're this team that's trying to contend and trying to take down the reigning champions, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, the almighty Los Angeles Lakers, you've got to keep your emotions in check because if you don't, the Lakers are going to feed off of that. For example, Jay Crowder, um, not only is he missing all of his threes, but he's completely throwing the series because someone should tell him who LeBron James is because Jay Crowder trash talked LeBron James and then LeBron scored like six, seven straight. Um, it was bad. Uh, LeBron had like an and one. He dunked and like just like kept driving to the basket. There was nothing Jay Crowder could do and nothing the Suns could do. Um, the last thing I think you want to do in this series is trash talk LeBron James and wake up the beast. Um, and that seems to be what Jay Crowder decided to do as in addition to missing a bunch of threes. There was a point in this game where the Lakers were kind of just clowning around. Uh, the whole bench was going crazy. LeBron was posting up. Andre Drummond was like pretending to post up as well on one other Laker um, mimicking LeBron. James they were just kind of having fun out there and I'm sure it frustrated the Suns because you played your butts off all season to get here to get become the two seed and now the other team is beating up on you and clowning you on the bench it's I'm sure it's frustrating but you've still got to keep your emotions in check you can't be 
doing that those you can't be having flagrant fouls at the end of the game jay crowder also got ejected at the end of the game you just can't be doing stuff like that you can't you have to keep your composure because that stuff can leak over into future games you've got to be like okay this game's lost we lost whatever and nothing's going to change that no amount of frustration fouls will change that you've got to accept it and ultimately the suns do still have a shot in this series but man do the lakers look locked in um this is these are the lakers that won the championship this is the lakers team that I picked to win the championship to start the season and the Lakers team I thought was going to show up and the, the team that I picked to ultimately repeat this season going into the playoffs. They look locked in and it's because not only can they do it offensively like Anthony Davis tonight, 34 points, 11 rebounds, LeBron 21, Dennis Schroeder 20. Those three guys could really just turn it up whenever you combine that with guys who can hit threes. Um, usually Kyle Kuzma, but he shot two, I think it was two of 12 tonight. He did have some great plays though. Kyle Kuzma has turned into a player that impacts the game way beyond scoring, which is something that he didn't typically do a lot of times in previous seasons. Last season, he kind of molded into that. And this season he's really committed to it. And it's been cool to watch. Uh, Kuzma has done a lot more than just be a scorer. And I think that's the biggest evolution for him and why he earned that contract that he did. A lot of people hated the Kuzma contract, but he's va very valuable to this team. The defense that he plays he's played great defense all season um the shot making that he usually provides like i said was not there tonight at all um but the shot making he usually provides he makes good decisions he makes hustle plays he had one play today where he was like sliding out of bounds almost or he was diving for a ball and he caught it and threw it up off cameron Payne, who was flying out of bounds knowing that there was no way cameron Payne could catch it and throw it back before he landed out uh, i'm pretty sure it was cameron Payne. if not it was someone else someone will let me know in the comments but Kuzma makes these hustle plays. LeBron and AD or LeBron and AD. Dennis Schroeder is that third option that the Lakers wanted to add coming into this season. And he's been done a great job of that so far in these last two games. The Lakers look locked in. And if I had to pick right now, I'm picking the Lakers to come out of the West, just as I did pick them um, coming into the playoffs. They look locked in. They flipped the switch. And it looked like they in that third quarter was when they flipped the switch fully because last game was tough. But this game, it never really felt close. Even when it was like down to a nine point game, it didn't really feel close. People were tweeting out on the timeline like, oh my God, if the Suns pulled this off and then the Lakers would do something that would just crush it. Um, they're, they're the reigning champs for a reason. And it sucks for the Suns. It really does. Um, and to be honest, I know Chris Paul's hurt and I do think Chris Paul does provide an impact in this series, but ultimately I don't even know if Chris Paul would be enough for this Suns team to beat the Lakers, like a fully healthy Chris Paul. I don't know if it's enough because the Lakers, when they're locked in defensively, they're scoring offensively. There's really just not much you can do. The Suns are a really young team. And even if they do fall in this series, I think they'll be back. It's just really, really, really unfortunate for the Suns team that they've got to face the Lakers in the first round. Um, I do think the Suns, the Suns are out of this series by any means. They've still got a good shot. Um, maybe not a good shot, but they've got a good, they've definitely got a shot in this series. But going down 2-1 with the Lakers having the next game at Staples, um, it's tough. It's just tough. And with Chris Paul not being 100%. Devin Booker having a really off game tonight, and he's he's got to find some kind of rhythm because the Lakers are doing everything they can to throw Devin Booker out of rhythm. When Chris Paul's not in the court, they are doubling Devin Booker. They're throwing whatever they, they want to at him. They're making other guys beat them, but Devin Booker is still trying to force the issue, which is what he probably needs to do without Chris Paul on the court. And even with Chris Paul on the court, he's got to provide some offense because with how good this Lakers defense is, it's probably up to Devin Booker to score most of the time. And if guys like Jay Crowder aren't hitting their shots, McCall Bridges isn't hitting his shots uh, cam johnson doesn't hit his shots someone's got to do it and shout out to Devin booker for trying it just he couldn't hit anything uh the lakers defense is different the lakers are different it looks like they're gearing up for another title run we'll see how that goes um but like i said if i have to pick today after watching these first three games of the playoffs for most of these teams uh some games have only some teams have only played two games but watching these first three two games throughout these series if i'm picking any team to come out of the western conference it's absolutely the los angeles lakers um now heading into bucks heat this is gonna be a sweep um i picked the bucks in six i thought the heat would put up some kind of fight they haven't they've looked awful in this series i haven't seen the heat look this bad in a long time um i really don't even know what to say here because like i said i thought this was going to be a fight i predicted this to be one of the most interesting series of the first round someone the other day asked me out of all these series which ones are most likely to go to seven games and i listed this in there i said lakers suns which now is a 2-1 series and the lakers look pretty locked in and I, then I said Mavericks Clippers, which the Mavericks seem to be pretty locked in on that side. I still think that could go seven games. And then Bucks Heat. 
and now this is a 3 0 series. So I apparently have no idea what I'm talking about, but ultimately the Bucks are just a better team. They're more talented. Uh, this is the reason why I picked them to win this series. The Heat had a great run last season, but they're missing the players that made that run so special. They're missing the shot creation. Uh, Tyler Hero is not the same. This is all the stuff I've said in the previous video, but I'll go over it again in case you didn't see it. Tyler Hero is not the same. They miss Jay Crowder, although Jay Crowder is not doing much better in Phoenix right now than what the uh, Miami Heat have. Um, they miss Jimmy Butler being Jimmy Butler. He had 19, 8, and 6, which was a good game from him. But like most of that was in the first half. I think he had 14 in the first half and he had five the rest of the game. Given this game was basically over by the, uh, or not over, it was only a 13 point game, but um, it felt really far out of reach by the end of that second quarter. And especially throughout the third quarter, it really felt out of reach. This game really never felt close. The Heat scored 14 points in the first quarter. They hardly scored 80. They scored 84 points in a playoff game. They just don't have any offense. They missed that three-point shooting that they had, and their defense isn't as good as it was last season, so they can't hang their hat on that. And if they can't stop anyone, they can't score, they're not going to win a game in this series. Not against the Milwaukee Bucks, who are a way better iteration of what the team looked like last season, and that looked terrifying. The Bucks heat Bucks Nets is going to be an incredible series. I'm going to have to do a full video breaking down that series because I think that's going to be insane. I am super, super excited for Bucks. Nets. Um, I don't think it's a stretch at all to say that this series and the Net Celtics series are over pretty much completely. Um, no team has ever come back, come back from down 3-0, especially not, not a team that's been destroyed the way that the Heat have been in these last two games. They're just outmatched in every facet of basketball. Um, Eric Spolscher can make all the coaching adjustments he wants. He put Goran Dragic in the starting lineup and he had eight points. Bam looks like he's afraid to shoot a lot of the time. Trevor Reza played 18 minutes and had, didn't have a single point. Duncan Robinson only had two. Uh, Nemanja Bielitsa, credit to him, had 14 points in 18 minutes tonight. Uh, Kendrick Nunn is once again proving to be a tough player to play in the playoffs. Uh, he's disappearing again for the second year in a row in the playoffs. I don't know what it is. It just seems like he's not able to be on the court during these high-intensity playoff games. The Bucks are just abusing the Heat in every single fashion, and... A lot of that, of course, comes down to Giannis, who had 17, 17, and 5, but he really hasn't even been that dominant in this series. Giannis hasn't quite looked like Giannis from the regular season, given he is playing great basketball still, but we have yet to see Giannis dominate the way we know he can. And they're still blowing out the heat. It's not even close. Chris Middleton, 22, 8, and 5. Drew Holiday, I can't rave enough about Drew Holiday and the way he's played in this series and how good he's going to be for the Bucs going forward throughout the playoffs. He's going to be the X Factor. And when the Bucks and Nets match up next round, he's going to have to lock up either Kyrie or James Harden. He's going to have to play great defense on one of those guys, kind of similar to the way that he had to play great defense on Dame for the Pelicans to sweep the Blazers a couple years back. He's going to have to play great defense on one of those two guards for the Bucks to have any chance of stopping the Nets. I think he's going to be on Kyrie. That's a really tough assignment. I think they're going to put him on Kyrie, Chris Middleton on James Harden, and Giannis on Kevin Durant. I think that's the way it's going to go. We'll see how that goes. It's going to be a tough one. Um, Dante DiVincenzo, hope he gets well soon. I did not see what his injury was um, or what they designated it and how long he's going to be out. If he will miss any time, hopefully he doesn't because he's a big part to this Bucks team. Only played nine minutes before going down with injury. Hope he's okay. Uh, guys like Bryn Forbes, Pat Connaughton, Bobby Portis are really stepping up. Um, like Elijah Bryant, Jeff Teague, Mamadi Diakite, Sam Merrill, um, and Axel Tupain all got minutes in this game. That's how much of a blowout it was. Uh, credit to all those guys, but um, yeah, it's not even close. The Heat have a lot of soul searching to do, and I said this in a, in a video about like two, three months ago when the Heat were really struggling, struggling, where I said that if the Heat like lose in the playoffs and they never quite make it back to that finals that they did, if they never reach like much of their potential that they seem to have shown it's gonna be a massive stain on, on pat riley's legacy that he didn't go out and make some moves they made it to the finals and the biggest move they made was trading for victor oladipo who given would probably help in this series but he's not enough not not even close uh they still would have gotten destroyed in this series i think um the bucks are really good and the Heat have to do some kind of soul searching. I don't know what they do. Unless they can lure Ka Kawhi Leonard away from Los Angeles, I really don't see a way this Heat team gets a lot better or becomes a championship contender again. Bam Adebayo is going to keep getting better. Jimmy Butler is still Jimmy Butler. And the hope, I guess, is that T Tyler Hero progresses, Duncan Robinson progresses, but they're going to have to pay him a ton of money in this offseason. I believe he's a free agent this offseason. If he's not, correct me below, please. But I'm pretty sure on that. Um, Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know what this Heat team does. Uh, we're going to talk about another team that I think is kind of in trouble in the Portland Trailblazers in terms of their current core in a second, but the Bucks are dominant. I can't wait for Bucks Nets. Let me know who you would have in that series below because I think that has potential to be one of the best series of this entire uh, playoffs. I'm excited for it. Then finally, we get to Nuggets Trailblazers. Uh, it was a five point game. It really wasn't that close for most or well, it was close all throughout the game. But towards the end, the Nuggets really took the lead. Austin Rivers had 21 points in this game. He really took over at the end. I think he had 12 points in like a five minute span at the end of the game. Um, but the Blazers, credit to them, kept it close. They kept hitting clutch threes. Dame hit a couple threes. CJ McCollum hit a three. They kept playing the free throw game, would run down the court, hit a three. So they slowly came back. And ultimately, they were down three with just a couple seconds left with Monte Morris at the free throw line. Misses the first, and he missed the second. Monte Morris is a great free throw shooter. He's one of the worst people to foul in terms of shooting free throws if you're trying to play that game. And he missed both. And it didn't matter because Yusuf Nurkic fouled out. Robert Covington was in at center. Jokic grabbed the rebound over them, put it back up and in to give them a five-point lead with about three seconds left. So the Blazers just lost. They didn't, they didn't stand a chance. Jokic making a game-saving MVP type play, 36-11-5. He's been so good in this series. The, the Trailblazers have no answer for him. Yusuf Nurkic can do all he can, but he's not good enough defensively to stop Jokic. No one really is but he's not doing himself any favors. Uh, 13, th 13 and six for him. But once again, like I said, fouling out. Nurkic just can't stop fouling. Um, it's a problem because if he's not on the court, then Ennis Cantor has to be on the court. And Ennis Cantor throughout this series has proved that he is unplayable in this matchup. Maybe he'll be playable if the Blazers make it out of this series against whoever they face from that Lakers Sun series. But Ennis Cantor is not playable in this series. He played six minutes. He was a minus 15 in six minutes. That's awful. I know plus minus isn't a like a perfect stat or anything like that, but that's pretty telling of how bad he's been. I think he's putting up like three points and four rebounds through the first two games. And then tonight he had 0, 0.0 assists and one rebound in six minutes. He's just getting torched. He can't rotate over. He's not playing good defense. He's not even scoring, which is his typical thing. He should be scoring and grabbing rebounds. And if he can't do that, he's just an all around liability on the court. They had, they had to put someone else out there. They played Rondé Hollis Jefferson for center minutes. And at the end of the game, they put Robert Covington on Nikola Jokic and Jokic would make him pay. And so they, could, they couldn't double team that much. And whenever they double teamed, it was off Austin Rivers, it seemed like most of the time, or Austin Rivers would somehow get open and he kept drilling threes. They couldn't do anything. This Blazers team just can't stop the Nuggets. The, the reason I picked the Nuggets is because I thought Jokic would be the best player in this series. He's been the MVP. He has been all season and he's playing like it right now. He's dominating them. They have no answer. Damian Lillard's a great player, but I trust Michael Malone to make the adjustments to stop Dame. And if he doesn't stop Dame, they're going to at least stop the role players. Dame had 37, two and five. He shot pretty poorly from three tonight, but he shot really good from two. Um, he, hit, he, like I said, hit a couple clutch threes. He did what he could at the end, but it's just not enough. There's not enough on this team outside of Damian Lillard to make the Nuggets pay or to equal the amount of points that the Blazers give up on every single night. They can't stop anyone, especially not Nikola Jokic. And you got to remember, this isn't a Nuggets team with just Jokic or with Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. This is a Jamal Murray-less Nuggets team. They all, they're also missing PJ Dozier. They're missing good players. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter because the Blazers can't stop anyone. They also don't have, even have Will Barton. That's another guy that I just remember that they also have. That's how long he hasn't played. Um, this Nuggets team is really hampered. And they're beating up on the Blazers. They they have thoroughly looked like the better team in this series. And that's when the problem comes around for the Blazers. If they don't win this series and they lose to a, a Nuggets team without Jamal Murray, without Will Barton, after having championship aspirations heading into the offseason of last year, heading into this season, what do you do? What does this Blazers team do going forward? Because I don't see many ways this roster gets better. They traded Gary Trent Jr., a young up-and-coming player, for Norman Powell because they thought it would they would have the opportunity to make them better, and it's kind of seemed like a lateral move so far. You don't have much room to grow with this roster. I think it's got to be a move of CJ McCollum. I think that's the only move they can make, and even then, I don't think get whatever you get back from CJ McCollum, unless you throw in like a couple picks and you you. This roster needs a full roster overhaul because even if you trade CJ McCollum for like a Bradley Beal. It's not better. This team doesn't become a contender out of nowhere. I don't see what they can do. There's no superstar level players they can really acquire with who they have on their roster because they don't really have any young and intriguing players. Like Anthony Simons is a young guy. He is intriguing. 
but him and picks isn't enough to get you like a superstar player if they're unhappy. It's just, I don't see where the Blazers go from here. And this has been the problem for them for multiple seasons. They, fe they feel like they're capped out. They made that Western Conference Finals one. That was a Western Conference Finals run. I think I said one. Um, they made that run to the Western Conference Finals. And it was like, oh, cool. Like the Nuggets, may or not the Nuggets, the Trailblazers. Maybe they have something here. And since then, they've dealt with injuries. And now this season, they're much healthier than the team across the court from them. And they're getting destroyed. Not necessarily destroyed, but they've gotten pretty beat up in these last couple games. I don't know where the Blazers go from here. Even if they win this series, I don't know where they go from here because this team's not good enough. They can't stop anyone. Um, yeah, I don't know. They had 19 bench points tonight and 17 of them were from Carmelo Anthony. Two of them were from Anthony Simons. Um, they played their starters heavy minutes in this game. They ran a seven, eight man rotation and two of the guys in that uh, seven man or in that eight man rotation were Ennis Kaner and Rondé Hollis Jefferson who played five and six minutes. It's just not enough. They don't have a bench. They can't stop anyone. They can't stop Jokic. I don't know where the Blazers go. I, you can fire Terry Stotts. I know I know that's going to happen in the offseason. But even firing Terry Stotts, I don't know how much that helps this Blazers team. They're really talented, but I don't think they're a championship team. So uh, those are my thoughts on all the games and what the games have made me kind of think of. Let me know what you think the Blazers and the Heat should do. I don't know where they go in this offseason. Um, they look lost right now. Let me know if you think the Lakers are going to win the Western Conference. What did you think of these games? What are your takeaways? As always, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. Like I said, I'm going to keep trying to pump them out every single night. So keep being on the lookout for these. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers in like just five months. That's ridiculous to me. Um, you guys are the best. I could not have asked for a better start to this YouTube thing. And I'm excited to continue to grow. And thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to talk about the sport I love. So I appreciate you guys. I will see you guys later. Real one safe back.